Hey what's up everyone and welcome to the Theme Park Technology YouTube channel. In today's video we will be discussing what exactly controls theme park rides. If you enjoy our content subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when we upload new content. I think it's fair to say that most people know that computers control rides, but no one ever mentions what type of computer and that detail is really important. Rides don't use your typical desktop computer. They use a PLC. PLC stands for Programmable Logic Controller. It's a type of rugged, industrialized computer that is mostly used in a factory or manufacturing environment. They are used to precisely control processes that require very strict adherence to parameters that ensure both safety and repeatability. For this same reason, theme park rides use PLCs. Let's take a brief look at the history of PLCs. Before PLCs existed, factories and theme park rides used hardwired relay logic to control their processes. Relays are electromechanical devices that reroute electricity and electrical signals to control equipment. While these systems were able to control processes in manufacturing and early rides, Making changes was not only labor intensive, but also expensive as everything was hardwired. These systems were also bulky and complicated, and the more features you wanted, the more relays that needed to be added to the logic. The solution was the PLC, which was in part developed by mechanical engineer Dick Morley and General Motors. The invention of the PLC forever changed the way we control machines. PLCs over the last 50 years have changed and developed immensely in terms of features and capability. Today's PLCs can do complex math calculations and algorithms required for LSM launch systems and other motion control involved in certain types of rides. This is a question that can't be answered in a single video, but we'll cover the basics. The first thing you should know is that a PLC uses a programming language called Ladder Logic. Ladder Logic is a visual programming language and it looks just like a ladder. The rungs of the ladder are made up of sets of instructions with inputs on the left and outputs on the right. The way the PLC executes the program is through a scan cycle. This diagram shows a typical scan cycle of a PLC. The PLC first does checks on its own processor and software to make sure everything is executing correctly. The PLC then scans for inputs such as a button press from a ride operator or a proximity sensor being flagged by a ride vehicle. The program processes these inputs against the logic and then updates the outputs, instructing a motor to turn on, set a block zone, or trigger a special effect in the ride. The process then starts over again. This process happens many times per second. Mentioned in the scan cycle was inputs and outputs. These inputs come from devices that are placed in different spots of the ride track or ride vehicle. They provide feedback to the PLC for controlling the ride. Inputs are generally either digital or analog. Push buttons and proximity sensors are examples of digital inputs. Analog inputs on the other hand are variable in nature. They act more like a light dimmer and are not just on or off but range anywhere in between. Pressure sensors and optical encoders are examples of analog inputs. This was a basic overview of how a PLC works, and obviously the topic is vastly more complicated, but hopefully this gives you a general idea. In theme park rides, the PLC is responsible for every aspect of control. The PLC is used to control launches, speed of the ride, and trigger effects, lighting, and audio. Not only are PLCs found as the brains of the ride control system, but in almost every newer ride, you'll find a PLC on the ride vehicles as well. They are used to report to the ride control system the ride vehicle speed and position on the track, as well as control any audio or lighting effects. When it comes to controlling a ride, the single biggest factor is safety, and for that reason, the specific type of PLC that is used is a safety PLC. It uses a main processor and a coprocessor that work in tandem and act as redundant systems. The probability of both processors failing at the same time and in the same manner are statistically rare and allow for one processor to maintain control and bring the ride to a safely stopped condition in case of a fault. A ride faulting and stopping is actually a good thing and a sign that the ride control system is working as designed. 
I won't get too much into safety as that is another very complex topic, so we'll save that for a future video. Well, I hope you found today's video interesting and informative into the world of theme park technology. If you enjoy our content, don't forget to subscribe and please leave a comment below letting us know what specific technology or ride you would like to learn about next. And if you would like to support our channel, you can hop on over to themeparktechnology.com and check out our shop. We got some pretty cool stuff. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.